Well, let's stay on the topic of WWE. The vowels? Oh, okay. Of WWE. Let's stay on the topic of WWE. What, a popular, what would you like to know about my colon? A popular topic sent in by many people. I'll read this one here. Sent to cornydrivethrough at gmail.com from Damon in Ohio. What are your thoughts, Jim, on Zelina Vega returning to WWE? Uh, he said, do you think a condition in her return was to give up Twitch? But I know you wouldn't know that. But what do you think of Zelina Vega returning to WWE? Uh, I'm just punched as pleased for, her. um, I have no, here's the thing. They obviously, she got a ton of bad publicity on them, uh, with the whole thing. What, what, how long ago was it? It seems like forever now, but it wasn't even a year no, ago. It was the spring, I think, or maybe February, March, somewhere. Yeah. There. Some, some, yeah. it wasn't spring yet. It wasn't, I love to sing uh, about the moon and the June. It wasn't there, there yet, but. But obviously, she took a stand. She got some bad publicity on them, and they've probably been talking quietly ever since about, well, let's do something. Let's just, you know, we, we're not going to bring you right back because then it looks like we fucked up, but we'll get you back eventually, and we'll potentially do something for you quietly until then or whatever. Who knows what the fuck these deals are? Possibly there was unmarked non sequential serial number bills in shoe boxes in the Home Depot parking lot. We have no idea. Mike Johnson, a PW insider who always does a good job, reported that uh, there have been talks since the moment she left. There were people in the company that didn't want her to go, which is becoming a familiar story. I mean, that's Triple H and Samoa Joe right there. But Zelina Vega, they had talks going on during this period of time, and WWE apologized to her. And now they got her back. Well, yeah, the and, and also, didn't they just shut down and or fire the guy that was supposed to be heading the department? That was going to do all the third party, yeah. The twitching and the fucking twittering, the twittering and the twitching and the glitching and all the things they were going to do that they were going to give the guys part of their own money for. Uh, and they closed that down. So they're probably just trying to, you know, do this slowly and and kind of act like nobody notices. Not that Selena Vega is coming back. People are noticing that, obviously, but they're trying to smooth over the other stuff like all is as it was before nothing more to see here remember she was the one who was having conversations with the head of the screen actors guild yeah and also uh um oh god damn it our favorite politician who was talking about that uh oh, andrew that yang fella, andrew yang he's been quiet about wrestling for a while hasn't he well uh, what's he doing these days well he was running for mayor in new york but he uh that's not working out well i wouldn't think i think he needs to go back to talking about wrestling but once uh, once he gets on the case, we'll get these things settled. But yeah, they're probably just quietly trying to just smooth everything back over. And I, I, it, here's another question, not even related necessarily to Zelina Vega. Who else had to shut down? And this might not even be a question you can answer. Possibly the minions out there in the cult of Cornette can chime in. Who else... In the WWE, had to shut down their Twitches and their social media and their third, their interactive shit that they were making money on, that the WWE threw the hissy fit about, and and basically said, "Well, it's our money," and that, <laughs> yeah, and we'll give you part of your own money, but we're going to run it, and it'll be so much better. Who gave that up and and now is the office replacing it since they just fired the guy that was going to run the department and, and that whole thing? Or is it just left laying there? Who's pissed about this? That's what I'm wondering. Who's pissed that's still there, not who was pissed that's coming back? Because think about this, Brian Last, oh, great wrestling savant. If you were a person... In the WWE, who say, oh, okay, well, I'd rather have this job than play video games on the internet or whatever the fuck they're doing for money. And they, you just dropped your shit, and you played along, and now they have fired the guy that was going to do that and, and gutted that department, as we've heard. And now they're bringing back somebody that was actually let go and or walked out or quit or didn't fight it or whatever. And you're like, well, hey, motherfucker. I gave up my shit, and now is, everything's okay with it. She probably got a raise. What about me? You left me out. That's Did an interesting question. That? That's an interesting question. Do you think she got a raise? Do you think Samoa Joe got a raise? 
Well, for the goddamn aggravation, I would hope that there was something involved, such as we'll give you a little extra to come back and not hate us for putting you through this publicly. Because it's not even more now. In the territory days, we used to finish guys up and just, okay, you'll finish on September 15th. That's your last date. We wouldn't announce it to the fans. You, you just you would be watching your local program and you just wouldn't see that guy anymore. And he'd be working somewhere else where the, they didn't know that he just got fired from somewhere. They, it's a new star coming in. Boy, the promoters had to pay a lot of money for him, not, oh, shit. So-and-so wrestling just kicked him the fuck out the door and now we got him. It's fucking stupid on both sides. Don't advertise to the goddamn fans when you fire somebody. They'll figure it out when you don't see him anymore. But it's not damaging that person as, as an attraction. And on the other side of it, you know, the, the, the fucking, the next place that he goes isn't getting some fucking guy that just got fired. But, it, it, but anyway, uh, I would have to think if somebody's just sitting there minding their own business doing what they're being told to do, and some of these people even had were cooperating with new music or with new ideas, and all of a sudden they get fired, and they tell the people on the internet around the world, yeah, we just fired old, old Ned. And then somebody asks old Ned to come back right after he's been embarrassed. If I was old Ned, I'd say, yeah, I'd like some fucking salve for that embarrassment. Elsewise, I'll just be over here, motherfucker. So I, who knows? So you're not surprised she went back? Well, no, because I mean, if, if they have been talking ever since she was let go, then possibly they realized very early on that there was a public relations situation with her talking to the Screen Actors Guild and Mayor Yang. And maybe we've, and they've probably just been discussing it and everybody let their feelings cool down. I would have to think. I know the way Vince used to fucking operate, more like a wrestling promoter. Cut so and so a check. Make sure they're happy. Or whatever the fuck. But I don't know if they do that anymore, but that's the way you, you should do things in a wrestling business. If you put somebody through something, here, grease so and so and let him know that we fucked up. Well, perhaps Vince can make things a little better with Zelina by supplying her with a healthy breakfast. Well, you know what? I, you know how I feel when I don't get a healthy breakfast? Just like that. I like that one today. I'm I'm enjoying that sound. But I'll tell you what. You know what? I do that a lot, too, around the house here because the magic spoon keeps disappearing. We have a box of magic spoon being delivered here to the castle grounds at least once a week these days. And by the time I can turn around... Jump down, turn around, and kiss my ass twice. It's gone because Stacy loves it, and she's doing the keto-friendly diet. I'm not gonna say how much weight she's lost because then that's not polite. That gets into a woman's weight, but she has lost almost as much as old dwarf dong sucker weighs, for heaven's sake, on this keto thing. And of course, that's only 22 pounds, so you know somewhere in that range. But anyway. Find out why that I can't even get Magic Spoon in my own home when they're a sponsor of mine. That's how good it tastes by going to magicspoon.com. Because whether you eat cereal for breakfast or as a snack or any part of the day, whether the kids like it, they like all the sugar, but you don't want them bouncing off the walls like souped up ping pong balls. So you don't want them to eat sugar and carbs and junk. The best part about Magic Spoon is they've got all the classic cereal flavors covered. And they all taste great, but they're healthy and delicious at the same time instead of one or the other. Zero grams of sugar, 13 to 14 grams of protein, or four, and four net grams of carbs in each serving. Only 140 calories a serving. I mentioned keto-friendly, also gluten-free, grain-free, soy-free, low-carb, and GMO-free. But what not free, Brian? That's taste. And you can build your own box or you can get the variety pack. Cocoa, fruity, frosted, peanut butter, blueberry, and cinnamon. Whatever you choose, go to magicspoon.com slash Jim, J-I-M, to grab your delicious custom bundle or variety pack 
and try today and use the promo code Jim at checkout to save $5 off the order. Remember the 100% happiness guarantee? If you don't like it for any reason, they will refund your money, no questions asked. A few dirty grimaces will be exchanged, but they won't ask you a question. Get your next delicious bowl of guilt-free cereal at magicspoon.com slash Jim and use the code Jim to save $5 off. You can just walk around the house eating this stuff like trail mix, Brian. 